Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Combat Corner, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. Topic of the day, John Jones, KO'd, KO'd Steve Miacic, the UFC 309 in Madison Square Garden. Woo-woo. Well, before we jump in, thank you so much for your continued support of this channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow. Hit the like button, pound the, the bell, become a member. Membership lives will be starting on Tuesday, so don't miss it. I know I'm a few days behind on this because I was, and I still am sick. If you can hear my voice, I'm still battling this crap. But I got to talk about this before it gets too old. John Jones knocked out Steve Miacic via body spinning back kick. That was a deadly back kick that he threw. No question about it. Badass spinning back kick. Much credit. He won the fight in the third round. But the fight itself, who gave a shit? Nobody cared. It was boring. The card was boring. The entire thing was uninspiring. And I said as much. I said it would be, and it was. Not a surprise. John Jones comes in as a monster favorite. Favorite. When I saw Stipe Miacic weigh in, he looked fat. And the UFC broadcast broadcast team was trying to make it sound like he was coming in big and strong and in great shape and all that nonsense. Daniel Cormier specifically, he was fat. He was he was too big. He looked like he hadn't been training. He looked soft in his gut. He did not look prepared. He looked like he didn't want to be there. He looked like a guy who had not fought in almost four years. He looked like a guy who was almost who was 42. He looked like a guy who had not won a fight in six years. That's what he looked like. And his performance showed. It was like watching slow motion punches. That's what Stipe looked like. He was in slow motion. First round, he's taken to the ground easily by John Jones. Ground and pound, he survives the round. Big thing. <clears throat> I will say this, round two, much more competitive round. He landed some shots. Round three, he landed some shots early on. I mean, if this thing had gone to round four, because we were getting close to that round four, I don't think John Jones had wiped him out. It was a 1-1 fight on a card in, after round two. I could argue that Steve Bay won round two. They were both plotting. They're both slow. John Jones, still so skillful, but he looks slow. I wasn't impressed by John Jones. There was nothing about his performance that was like, oh, my God. It was a blah fight, as expected by two older fighters. John Jones does not have the same quickness that he had before. He definitely doesn't have it when he's carrying 35 extra pounds going into a fight. Just doesn't. He needs to knock somebody out. It doesn't exist. But he does win the fight, and at the end of the fight, he deflects everything possible. He's asked about Tom Aspinall. Oh, he'd rather talk about Jesus Christ and his Lord and Savior and blah, 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 and being a Christian. I don't give a shit about that, John. No one does. No one cares about your relationship with God. No one cares. Only thing people care about is you fighting Tom Aspinall. And Dana White post-fight says, that fight even showed me more reason why we would I would never make the Alex Pereira fight. Why? Because Alex Pereira does not stop takedowns. And Dana White knows this. If John Jones ensures that he'll fight a kickboxing match, he'll make that fight. But if he dares go, if he dares to look for takedowns, then no, why would they make that fight? John Jones is a bigger he's bigger than Pereira. He's not much bigger, but he's bigger. At the same time, John Jones won't wait 30 seconds to go for a takedown. 
he'll immediately go for a take. Hell, even Tom Aspinall said he would go for a takedown immediately on Alex Pereira. The fight we care about is him fighting Tom Aspinall. And he's deflected it as much as he possibly can. Continues with his rhetoric about Aspinall after the fight. Blah, blah, blah. Dude, there's only one fight we care about, John. And if you're not going to fight it, retire. Because no one cares about watching you fight Alex Pereira. We care about us. We care about that as much. If uh, we care less about, we care more about that than we care about watching this crap. Though this crap that you had with Stipe Miocic was an embarrassment. But I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. The card itself, trash. Trash. Yes, straight up trash. Nothing impressive about this card. The Bo Nickel fight, atrocious. We should never see Bo Nickel fight again on a main card of a pay per view. He's not good. He's offended of what the commentator said about him during the fight that Kamzat Shemaev would run right through him. You have a fighter who's a world class wrestler who was afraid to wrestle. And the comparison was made to Chimaev. Would Chimaev be afraid to wrestle Paul Craig? Fuck no. He'd go in and take his ass down, be damned about the possible submissions, and he'd look to pound his ass out on the ground. Instead, Bo Nickel had a kickboxing match with a a Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner who can't even kickbox. And you still couldn't knock that guy out because Paul Craig on his feet stinks. That fight was a disgrace. And Bo Nickel, and you know what? For all that, I didn't think it was a 30-27 fight. I thought Paul Craig arguably won rounds one and two. Bo Nickel did nothing special. Nothing. Paul Craig throws a kick. He threw it a lot. That fight was horrible. <clears throat> fight was horrible. Co-main event, Michael Chandler and Charles Oliveira. Michael Chandler, my God. Michael, if you're going to go out there and fight, you need to be you. Need to be, you. be you. If you're going to do this, I'm going to hold against the cage, and I'm going to be patient. Fuck all that. Fuck all that. You got to be you. You talk too much shit. To not be you. Because Charles Oliveira for four rounds made him look stupid. Charles Oliveira is definitely more skilled than Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler has forgotten how to wrestle. Apparently he doesn't have a wrestling base anymore. He chose to be backing up and not attacking. And Bro, you got to go forward. And in round five, he finally goes forward. He drops him. He hurts him. Takes him, he's on the ground, but then he goes and throws a million, a million shots to the back of the head. <clears throat> I'm telling you right now, the, 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 the shots to the back of the head in MMA is the most uncalled thing there is. Because that's not the first time I've seen people drop bombs to the back of the head and then not take a point or call it. So people are saying, oh, he's a dirty fighter. I don't think, I don't think Chandler's a dirty fighter. I think he's a fighter. Fighters do whatever they got to do to win. This shit about, clean and dirty. If if you think that Chandler's dirty, then you definitely think John Jones is dirty. Because John Jones eye gouges for a living. That's an opinion. I don't think he's dirty. I just think that shit happens and you try to save yourself. Yes, you'll grab the cage. You get away with it, you get away with it. If you don't, you don't. That doesn't make you dirty. I think fish hooking makes you dirty. I think Crot shots on purpose make you dirty. Not grabbing the cage. Not when you're trying to pound down like this. And really what, what it was, his fist wasn't his fist wasn't hitting Charles Oliveira in the back of the head. What was happening was his forearm was. And he's coming down and his form is hitting here every single time. So, yeah, you call it. But at the same time, if I'm channeling, I'm like, get your ass up and fight him. Keep fighting. Fight him on the feet. You don't want to, you, you, like you're not gonna win this fight in, in on the ground 
And then at the end, he, he does this back thing where he's so strong, he just drops on his back. He should have come forward and spiked him into the ground. That would have been the better option. That drop to your back shit, that's old. That doesn't work anymore. You never see that shit work anymore. No, you got to come forward. You got to spike him. You need to spike his head either into the ring post where the padding is or spike him square into the ground. That's how you can potentially escape that. Otherwise, it's just it's just a show. <laughs> the rest of this fight card, I mean, Viviana Ara Araujo, Kareem Silva. I thought Kareem Silva won the fight. I thought Kareem Silva won rounds one and two. I did. I thought she won rounds one and two. I didn't think I, I thought she argued. I thought she argued won round three as well. But rounds one and two, I thought she won. I don't see what they're looking at. It's like they looked at the last 20 seconds of round two and said, okay, Araujo won. Araujo won based on the last 20 seconds because for most of that round, Kareem Silva was winning. Body language round three for Kareem Silva was terrible. She was exhausted. But even then, she landed the bigger shots. She landed the shots. Like, it, it, it's one of those things where how does it look? How does it look? That's the question. I thought round one was clearly Kareem, Kareem Silva. I thought she won round two. I, I, I mean, they're going to look at the total strikes and say, oh, she outstruck her. That's because she landed like 20 little pit pat shots from top in the last 20 seconds sitting on top of her. Those, those weren't shots that were anything special. They both were in submission attempts. And even in round three, Kareem Silva outlanded her. So it's like, what are you talking about? But you gotta, you got to be in better shape. Kareem Silva has to be in better physical shape. And the last fight, the, the, the starting fight was James Longtop and Mar Mauricio Hufi. Good fight, fun fight. Longtop came in way overweight, but he fought his ass off. Round three, he was fighting his ass off. I wasn't impressed at all with Hufi. Hufi will lose to good fighters. He's fun, but he'll lose to good fighters. Wasn't impressed. But again, you have a guy who came in literally 17 pounds overweight. Because then initially the fight was supposed to be at one, uh, 145. <laughs> what was it? 140, 140, wherever it was, he was like 17 pounds over the actual weight of the division that he's supposed to be fighting in. So, and he came in like seven pounds overweight on the catch weight. So, yeah, no, I'm not impressed at all with any of these fights. The, I saw parts of the of the prelims. I didn't see all of them, so I'm not going to sit here and say I saw them all. I did see the Taburo Jonata Dinez fight. Brutal. If Dinez can't win, like, what do we have in the heavyweight division? Tabura is not a top contender in the heavyweight division. And Dinez is supposed to be someone who's up and coming. And he got his ass whipped. Onama and Roberto Romero was a fun fight. And Romero was bringing it in the first round. Again, another situation in which I thought Romero arguably won round one. And, you know, it is what it is. <clears throat> he definitely got tired. I don't think this was anything. I don't think this was a massively impressive fight for Onama. Miller beats Damon Jackson. Marcus McGee beats Jonathan Martinez. The UFC guys to keep, stop pushing these these mediocre pay per views. I'm sorry, I'm tired of it. I'm so tired of it. But again, that's what, and then that's what we're gonna get in the next one. So, what's new? Like we're gonna get another mediocre pay per view on December seventh that features Alexander Pantoja and Kai Asakura, who no one's ever seen before. What is this, 1995 UFC? We're putting out main events for a pay-per-view for a guy who's never fought in the UFC? Is this for real? You couldn't fight, you couldn't offer Pereira enough money or Ankalaya enough money to make that fight happen in December? <clears throat> you know, that card in itself, I mean, they made the adjustment with Shavkat Rachmanov to fight Ian Gary on it. Great. Surreal Gone versus Volkov. I think Volkov's gonna kill Surreal Gone. Bryce Mitchell, Cron Gracie. How's that a main card event? Nate Nate Landwer against Duhoy Choi. Main card? Like, what are we doing? People are paying for this shit. People are paying. 
Ticket prices for this event are in the toilet right now. But people are paying to watch this on pay-per-view. And you put a pay-per-view fight on the prelims. Dominic Reyes and Anthony Smith. Look, I expect Dominic Reyes to dominate this fight. But these are two names that you would put on the main card. Vicente Luque should be on the main card. I know Nick Diaz dropped out. Big shot. Randy Brown, Brian Battle. That would be more main card than Nate, Nate versus Duhoy or Bryce Mitchell versus Kron Gracie. Are you kidding? Mosalar Evloev versus Aldo's on the prelims. That would be a main card. I mean, there's some decent fights here, but when I look at a card on pay-per-view and you're, you're putting this shit on here over fights that are better on the prelims, and they just added Chris Weidman versus Eric Anders to this fucking shit, whatever. Michael Chiesa versus Max Griffin. Clay Guida and Chase Hooper. Cody Durden and Joshua Van. Talison Teixeira versus Lucas Brizzi. The card is, you know, here's the funny part. There are some good fights, and the main event sucks. And I'm not saying the main event won't be a great fight. I don't know. Pantoja always has great fights. But you got someone here that no one, folks, the general public doesn't know anything about this guy. I'm sorry, Kai Asakura, like, I don't know anything about this guy. I've never seen him fight. I have to go watch video now to go learn who the hell he is. I know who he's fought. I know who he's lost to. I think Pantoja's going to kill him. My opinion, based on fighters that he's fought, and I'll tell you right now, Kai Asakura has lost to Hiro Hiro Masa Ogukubi. Forget, I'm not going to try. His, he has a win over Juan Archuleta. He lost to Kyojo Hiroguchi. He lost to Manel Cop. He has a win over Manel Cop. He has a win over Horiguchi. Those are his fights. Those are the people he's beaten. His best win is over Horiguchi and Cop. Pantoja's already beaten Cop. I don't know, man. I don't know. So that's all I got. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I appreciate y'all. I just wish USC started putting out some stuff that mildly resembles pay-per-view worthy card. Pay-per-view worthy card. That means every fight in the pay-per-view paid for $89 is worth watching. That's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Appreciate y'all. Be sure to like subscribe, like, subscribe, and comment. Ring the bell. Hit that like button. I appreciate y'all. Come on now.